I never thought I'd do this again. Each time you buy a wheelbarrow, you tell yourself it's the last time. Is it five already? I should be getting home. I have plans. Evening plans. For tonight. We all do, Bill. We're watching Hank use his wheelbarrow. Yep, I gotta shower up before dinner. The dinner I'm having with the guest. The female guest. Should I order oysters, or is that too forward? <laughs> Somebody ask me about my plans! I have a date! A date? Well, all right, that's something. Where'd you two meet? Oh, I haven't met her yet. <laughs> but Sergeant Dawson, who set us up, said she's absolutely perfect for me. A woman who is perfect for Bill. Yeah, that's a disturbing image. Huh, John Redcorn doesn't work here. <laughs> oh, he works here all right. If by work here you mean having casual sex. Excuse me, Bill. Bill Dotrieve? Wow. So, Charlene, I understand you're new to town. Actually, I lived in Ireland during my 20s, but I moved around a lot and haven't been back until now. I don't know what we did without you. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be back, and I think my kids should be happy here. You have kids? Wow. Charlene's smart, beautiful, and she has kids. <laughs> How did I get so lucky? You got lucky because she has kids. You can get quite a bargain if you're willing to date a single mom. Yeah, man. You're talking about a dang old, like a slightly used merchandise, man. I'll paint their rooms like different fairy tales. And every night at bedtime, I'll wander in like a different creature from the forest. I have 85 channels at home, and none of them beats watching Hank use a crescent wrench. Hi. I'm looking for 122 Milton Street. Why, that's Bill's house. Uh, Bill's place is just across the alley. So you must be Charlene. Yes. And these are my kids, Kate and Drew. Wow, what a beautiful lawn. It looks just like a golf course. Well, thank you, Kate. Hey, man, how you doing, little old, little old shaver dad? Talking about it, got your nose. Pardon me, sir. I'm ten. Um, hi. Afternoon. Kate. Boy, what nice kids. And that Charlene's a real beauty. No, I don't like her. How could you not like her? Charlene seems great. I'm talking about the weird one. Kate, didn't you see it? See what? The contours of her face. The hazel deadness in her eyes. Something is severely unright with that child. Potential pod person. Probable robot. Possible pod bot. Dale, those kids were perfectly fine. They... Hank, you'd cozy up to Mussolini if he liked your lawn. That girl is not one of us, and I intend to prove it. Dang it, no you won't. Bill was lucky enough to meet a nice girl, and you're not going to mess it up. My gut says... Ignore your gut. Just let it go and be happy for Bill. My weird hunches are wrong. I will ignore my gut and be happy for Bill. I will ignore my gut and... I don't trust you. Hey, who wants to play a game? We're already playing a game. This one's better. It's called, Who Can Pluck the Longest Hair from Their Head? Kate, you first. Uh, <laughs> I don't think... You don't have to. Ow! Hey! You're the winner. Yeah. Oh. I didn't get a turn. This is so great. It's like I got married at 30 and my wife never left me. Yep. <laughs> A lazy afternoon, just the Hill family and the Dotrieve clan. And Joseph. 
Wow, Kate, you sure are good with a grenade launcher. I like hand grenades because you can shove them in people's mouths and watch their intestines blow out. <laughs> So, Bill Dotrieve. How shall I say this? Peggy, in my younger days, a set of muscular arms and a bad attitude were all I needed in a man. But as I've matured, I've realized a sweet, stable guy is a far better catch. I see. So, you're attracted to the muscular arms inside Bill. Something like that? And the fifth best thing about kids is the sound of their laughter. <laughs> I was right. I knew there was something weird about Kate. Kate? Dang it, Dale, you said you were gonna drop this. And I would have, had her DNA test not yielded such amazing results. DNA test? The printout of her genetic markers was oddly familiar, so I compared her results with another set in my collection and found a point-by-point -point match to precisely one-half the DNA sequence of the second individual, Joseph. What are you... Joseph and Kate share paternal DNA. They have the same father. Oh, God. Dale, so this means... Precisely. Kate is my daughter. Huh? How could Kate be your daughter? As you may recall, I learned some time ago that Joseph was conceived while I was away from Nancy, an anomaly that can only be explained by alien gene traders covertly planting my DNA into my sleeping wife. Uh... Right. After impregnating Nancy, the aliens must have then left my genetic material with Charlene in the hopes of engineering a master race with me as the foundation. The how is simple enough. It's the why that troubles me. Uh, well, Dale, aliens are an unpredictable bunch, so uh, I think your best bet is to do nothing. Yep, nothing. So all the while that Nancy was cheating on Dale with John Redcorn, John Redcorn was cheating on Nancy with Charlene, and he's the father of Joseph and Kate, while Dale thinks Joseph and Kate are his? Pretty much. Oh. My God. This is like sitting poolside at Frank and Melrose Place. The only question is who to call first. Now, hold on, Peggy. Let's not rock the boat. Bill has a girlfriend. I, I cannot keep this to myself. I have to tell... Oh, I can't tell Nancy. Or Charlene. And you probably shouldn't tell Bill. Or Dale. God knows Boomhauer can't keep a secret. We can't tell anyone. Yep. There's not a thing we can do. Why are you not outside with Kate and Joseph? They're getting way too chummy. It's like they only want to hang out with each other. Are you going to let yourself get squeezed out? No friend, no girlfriend? Is that what you want? No. Then get out there and fight for your spot. Third musketeer, go, go, go! This is how you throw a spiral. <laughs> hey, throw to me! I'm open! Aliens, I know your rubbery glowing hands are in this, but why? I need to take this investigation to the front lines. Look who it is! What brings you to my favorite restaurant that I never talk about? No, oh, hey Dale, we're just sitting down for a family meal. <laughs> why don't you join us? Well, maybe for just a minute. Good choice on the mashed potatoes, Kate. Tasty and a fun place to sculpt your subconscious thoughts. Mm-hmm. Eh, hmm. Don't know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. 
Nancy, quick question about the night Joseph was conceived. When the aliens teleported here to impregnate you with my DNA, do you remember anything unusual? Excuse me? It seems I have another child. I ran a DNA test on the daughter of Bill's girlfriend and found out she and Joseph have the same father. I'm sorry. Did you say Joseph and this girl have the same father? Not only that, but they were born just a few days apart. Yep. I guess you and Charlene were visited by the same aliens. In the same week. Maybe the same day. I need to make a call. But I never even met a Charlene. Oh, hey, Shug. You're home early. John Redcorn, good to see you. Did Nancy tell you about Joseph's sister, i.e. my daughter? Yes, but there must be some mistake. That's not what the DNA says. Well, it's wrong. I never, I mean, Dale never cheated on you. Uh, of course not. The alien... Never, John Redcorn. You're saying Dale didn't cheat on me even once? I'm not sure why John Redcorn would have that information, but no, I... Okay, maybe there were isolated incidents, but Dale always took precautions. So now it's incidents? Nancy, please. It's... it's very complex. Huh! <sighs> John Redcorn is right. The alien plan is far too complex. I guess we should follow Hank's advice and do nothing. <sighs> I feel better already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ah, uh, Hank, you were right. It feels good not trying to figure out this whole alien thing. Yep, and it's better if you don't even talk about it. Yep, it's back to a mundane life of drinking beer and helping my jackass friends shop for wheelbarrows. Guys, I have great news. I asked Charlene and the kids to move in with me, and they said yes. What? Wow. Way to go, Bill. Mm -hmm. I'm having a big party tomorrow to welcome them. <laughs> See you then! No, nah, -uh. no way. Alien master plans are one thing, but this I cannot accept. Bill Dotrieve will not raise my daughter. If you have some idea of what we should be doing, I'm listening. All right, then. Con, man. So glad you could be here to share our joy. Oh, we would have missed it for the world. We're so happy for you. Now, where'd that bastard child Peggy Hill tell you about? You do it. No, I want you to do it. Let's do it together. <laughs> <laughs> Smashing anthills, huh? Gosh, we all have so much fun together. So, Charlene's moving in, huh? Have you told her all about your idiosyncrasies? Like your fear of floss? Or how you use your loofah for non-loofah purposes? Charlene loves me for who I am. She told me so last night. <sighs> Charlene, congratulations! Say, have you seen the 1987 film The Stepfather, where a seemingly loving man cozies up to a single mother only to go nuts and kill everyone? It stars the bald guy from Lost. John Redcorn? Is that you? Dale, you must be wondering why I'm hiding behind this bush. No, I just figured there was a cool Indian reason. Is there a cool Indian reason? Yes, but I also wanted to see Joseph's sister and her mother. That's Charlene. <gasps> Candy? Sorry, I don't have any. You know, the mothers of my children are pretty hot. The aliens seem partial to pouty lips and an ample bosom. Yes, yes they do. Well, I'm leaving. Couldn't even turn a woman off Bill. How's that for sad? I wish I had a debonair ladies man to seduce her. Too bad Boomhauer finds motherhood disgusting. Well, see you later, John. Redcorn! Of course! I'm sorry? John Redcorn, I bet you could romance a woman out of a relationship with a giant doofus. Dale, are you asking me to steal your friend's companion? I don't want my child raised by an idiot! Yes, it's very difficult to watch an idiot raise your child. Then join me, and together we can strike down this perverse and unholy union! There's some sex in it for ya. Very friendly. I'm so glad we're here with Fitty.
Very well. I will help. Wingo! The sex will be with Charlene. You got that part, right? Bill, the kids already like you. You don't need to buy all this junk food to win them over. Uh, yeah, yes, kids. Mm, that's just what I was doing. Bill, what a relief. I dropped my keys in the back of the meat freezer, and I need someone well insulated to fish them out for me. I'm kind of the go-to guy for stuff like this. I'll be right back. <sighs> John Redcorn. Hello, Kendi. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. I haven't gone by my stage name in years. It's Charlene now. Your name may have changed, but your incredible beauty has not. So, Bill, how's life as a not entirely legal guardian? Oh, oh great. Just, just great. <laughs> a little tiring, but so worth it. I've had a lot of quality time with the kids since Charlene hooked up with her old girlfriends. <laughs> oh, yeah? A nice bunch of gals, are they? Well, I haven't met them, but they seem fun. They've kept Charlene out late every night this week. <laughs> <clears throat> Just remember to funny Sniglet. Bill, honey, I'm meeting the girls for lunch. Can you come back to the house? Well, gotta go watch the kids. Good times. Hey, partner! Just wanted to get a status report. Phase one infiltration seems to have been accomplished. Repeatedly. When do we get to phase two? Charlene breaking up with Bill. Dale, romancing a woman out of a relationship requires much energy. Okay, but let's not drag it out. I'd like to shatter Bill's happiness in a way that doesn't leave him all mopey. So, going out to meet the girls, huh? Again? I'm sorry. It's just that seeing the girls after all this time has brought back some fond memories. Do you want me to cancel so I can watch the kids? No, no. Have a, have a good time with your girlfriends. I, I was going to take the kids to Captain Bear's Pizza. <laughs> Let them crawl over someone else's furniture for a change. Oh, Bill. You're so good with Kate and Drew. They have so much fun with you. Yeah, I, I do with them, too. They're, they're just a big bundle of... <laughs> Don't get the fire extinguisher! <laughs> Was that John Redcorn? I know. How long does it take to steal a woman from Bill? Uh, well, perhaps I should explain. Um, you see, I've recruited John Redcorn to seduce Charlene. Soon my daughter will be out of that screw-up Bill's house and back in the healthy embrace of a single-parent family. You asked John Redcorn to break up Bill and Charlene? Ah, dang it. I tried not to get involved, but this tears it. Let's go. Uh, 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 Bill, Dale's got something to tell you. Uh, hey, Bill, what's going on? No, oh, just hanging laundry. Kids sure do like playing with mustard. Mustard! <laughs> That's kids for ya. Bill, I have a confession. Charlene hasn't been out with her girlfriends the past two weeks. She's been with John Redcorn. John Redcorn? How, how do you... I set it up. Charlene and John Redcorn are having an affair. Not in the face! You did hear him, right, Bill? Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I just went a little nuts when I found out you'd be raising my daughter. Hey, what's that now? Uh, Dale tested Kate's DNA, and uh, she and Joseph have the same father. <laughs> Joseph and Kate have the same father. You. Charlene and John Redcorn, huh? They seem like a good couple. So you're not filled with rage? Actually, I feel... okay. I, I don't think I'm cut out for parenthood. Actually, I hate kids. I mean, not all kids, but just, just the ones that are around all the time. <laughs> Dang it, Bill Cosby made it look fun, and I fell for it. We all fell for it. Plus, I had a woman stolen by John Redcorn. That's kind of an honor. We should all be so lucky. 
So Charlene and the kids are moving in with John Redcorn. Sure was nice of Redcorn to agree to raise my child for me. Can't say I'd do the same. She was like the other half of my soul, and now she's gone. Oh, this must be what those songs by the chick with the boobs were about. I know it hurts, buddy. But on the bright side, you still got me. Yeah. Thanks. She had a lot of eyebrows for a chick anyway. Here she comes. The Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> we get her every year. This is the one day a year my dad disappoints me. Feeling a little left out, are you, Bobby? Well, you shouldn't. I got something in the truck just for you. You like your birthday bone, don't you, girl? Look, everybody! <laughs> what the hell is that? It's my new pet, Josh. Lucky gave it to me. He's gonna be such a great father. Get that snake off you this instant. I will not sit by and watch you be strangled in my very own home. Lucky, you're taking that dang thing back. I don't know, Hank. Snakes make pretty cool pets. They don't have legs, so they can't run away from you. And no matter how hard you cuddle it, you can't break it. No, snakes are awful pets. It's like a breathing stick staring at you all weird. Now put it down. Okay. Oh, it's coming to kill me. It knows I'm a Christian. <laughs> Whoa, I ain't never seen it do that before. It's agitated. Somebody go get Dale. If I leave, you guys will let me back in, right? <sighs> People should just have dogs. Well, Dale, what do you think? You think you might want to grab it? This is going to take time, Hank. I'm trying to break its spirit, but it's an alpha snake, whilst I am clearly a beta snake. <gasps> Clever opening gambit. Game on. Ha! Well, it's in the toilet. Too late. No, it's not. Quick, grab it. Sorry, Hank. I'm a private contractor. This is now a public matter. Once that snake's head crosses the rim threshold, it's the county's problem. County's problem? Come on, do something. Not to worry. The county animal control guys are the best. I've personally seen Tommy and Rollo kill a gopher with a pigeon. The species is a Burmese python around six feet long. It escaped down the toilet at 11.46. So what do you want us to do about it? Uh, I'd like you to catch it. <sighs> uh, Little League field's clean. They don't pay us enough for this. And this Yahoo wants us to catch his pet snake. It's not my pet, but it is your job. Yeah, well, we don't get paid the kind of money the cops and firemen do. Not even close. But when city halls run over by possums, they don't make them disappear. We do. Yeah, you think it's just magic. Well, it's the kind of magic you do with a ball-peen hammer in a deserted place. This is the magic I believe in. I pay my taxes and you find that snake. People hate them, and if they find out that a six-foot one is loose in the sewer, it could cause a panic. Panic? Hmm. Maybe this could cause a panic. Mr. Hill, I am putting this matter to the top of our agenda. Here's a form that will expedite things. Ah, finally. Paperwork. 
now we're getting somewhere. That guy's serious. We might have to do something. We are gonna do something. Nothing. The longer that snake is out there, the more the town panics, the more valuable we become. That snake is our ticket to crazy overtime. Well, all I know is I had to raise a little hell in there. But sometimes that's what you gotta do to get the proper forms. And switching now to a breaking story, we go live to the Heimlich County Animal Control Department. A uh, 12-foot-long Burmese python escaped earlier today from what we can piece together. An untrained animal hobbyist, Hank Hill, purchased this animal as a joke, grew bored with it, and apparently flushed it down the toilet. That's not true. I don't believe this. They're lying on the news. Are they talking about Josh? People think these animals make good pets, but they don't. They're cold-blooded killers. Literally. <sighs> Chilling. And now we go to our own Nancy Hicks Gribble, live on the scene. Oh, no, no, don't show our house. No. Thanks, Miguel. Neighbors such as myself describe Mr. Hill as a quiet and somewhat rigid man, and the last person you'd expect to release such a deadly threat into this community's hearts and homes. <sighs> you know, I always thought we'd be on TV for being murdered in our sleep. <laughs> Dang it, my phone is ringing off the hook. You boys need to catch a snake. That's what I told him. We are doing everything possible. The snake that was set loose in our community is a vicious predator and it cannot be caught on the cheap. Oh. It's gonna take time. Oh. It might take time and a half. Oh. Golden time. And hazard pay, thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Our budget's too tight as it is. This is a crisis of public safety, Don. It appears my colleague here is soft on snakes. Are you kidding me? Nobody hates snakes more than I do. Well, you sure have a funny way of showing it. If anyone knows my history, he knows I'm tough on snakes. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. As chairman, I move we allocate more money to snake eradication. This isn't about money. Just make these people do their jobs. I say we don't just allocate some money. We allocate all money needed. Yeah. I say on top of that, we get these boys another full-time animal control officer to help win my war on snakes. Hmm. <laughs> Dale, get on your cleanest jumpsuit because you are going to apply for that job with county animal control. An opening? But I don't have the chops to work with Tommy and Rollo. Why do you like these guys so much? So far, all they've done is blame me and ask for money. Well, I always blame you and ask for money. Maybe I could fit in. Mr. Gribble. Yes, yeah, ridiculous name, I know. What makes you think you could be a snake hunter? To be honest, I have no business even sitting here with you gentlemen. I am unqualified, uncertified, and untrained. I have no references, I am prone to nervousness, and when nervous, I vomit in my mouth. Dale, you shouldn't be so hard on yourself. As a matter of fact, you're exactly what we're looking for. Really? Are you sure? Go on home. Make love to your wife, and then come back here ready to be a hero. But, but she's at work. I'll figure it out. <laughs> He's perfect. That moron couldn't find a snake if he was wearing it for a necktie. Kill you later. Oh, what the hell. There's no reason for this panic. There's never been one instance of a snake jumping out of a toilet and biting someone. I even went on the... the web. It's funny how much one little snake can change a man's life. My bathroom used to be where I went to find comfort and peace. Now it's the sum of all my fears. Yeah, man, it's like I don't even have a dang old place to read my old newspaper no more, man. Don't worry about a thing. Now that Dale Gribble, animal control specialist, has joined what my wife, the media, has dubbed Team Snake Hunt, that snake is all but caught. Whoa. 
And best part of all, I'm working with my idols. It would be like Boomhauer working with Wilt Chamberlain or Hank working with the Dr. Propane, I'm assuming. Just promise that you'll catch that snake soon. I get more looks and whispers than that bank teller who's in between genders. Well, this has been a great first day. You guys have introduced me to Sudoku, and we came up with our theme song. Now, this might be the pedicure talking, but when are we going to catch that snake? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. If we rush into this, then the snake is one. Huh. Gentlemen, here are your beers and your banana splits. Enjoy. And by the way, your bill has been taken care of. Thank you, Team Snake Hunt! Hey! We begin with an Arlen Snake Alarm update. <sighs> Just turn the channel. Now, I hope you're proud of yourself, Hank. Because of you, I gotta find some place besides a commode to do my business. Huh? I didn't have anything to do with this snake. It was a gift t to my son. S see, it was my dog's birthday. Uh, d no one has anything to worry about. The toilets are safe. Don't buy into this media frenzy. Let's hear you say that sitting on a toilet, honey. It was one of the few pleasures in my life, and you took it away. <sighs> For the shopping experience of a lifetime, drive up to the McManerberry Mall. Snake free since 1982. Damn, waiting for this foam will be the death of me. You know the firemen have a self-frothing machine. Yeah, and the cops have new headquarters and those matching ATVs. Why are we always at the bottom of the food chain? Because they all have bond measures. You know how it works. Cops can't catch criminals unless bond measure C passes. Librarians will shut down the children's weeding womb if bond measure L doesn't pass. Hmm. Huh. If Team Snake Hunt gets its own bond measure, we can have any cappuccino machine we want. Hell yeah. Bond measure S for snake. What do you say, brother? I don't know anything about bond measures. That's the beauty of it. Nobody does. But they all vote yes. And once the bond measure passes, then we'll catch the snake? You got it, buddy. Once bond measure S passes, that snake is toast. I keep looking up at the sky and wondering if Josh is looking up at the same sky. You'll feel better after you build a bear. Hey, Hank Hill. Snake scandal devalue my property more than don't reef sunbathing on front lawn. It's true. I checked. Dale, you'd better have a snake in that backpack. Don't be ridiculous. How would I put a snake in my pack with all my sophisticated snake-finding equipment? Like my personal ionic air purifier, my anti-fog mirror and CD player, and my monogrammed flotation device. What do you need with all that stuff? <laughs> Don't be embarrassed by your ignorance, Hank. You as a citizen idiot would have no idea how to catch a snake. Dang it, Dale. I made you get that county job to make sure those guys did their job and caught that snake. Have you even looked down in the sewers? We don't just willy-nilly go down in the sewers, Hank. It takes strategy, planning. In fact, Tommy and Rollo are in the snake control room as we speak, planning our next move. The what? The snake control room? Now, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's probably just the copy room. The copy room? I don't think all the monitors, sensors, and tracking devices would fit in the copy room. I think the snake control room is more like the danger room from the X-Men. So you've seen it? Of course. 
I mean, uh, I've been outside the door. I don't have clearance to... It's a, it's a lengthy review process. Huh. Come on, Dale. We're going to see what those giblet heads are really up to. Guys? Um, I know you said never to bother you when you're in the war room, but I need to talk to you about something. Guys? You were right, Hank. They're frauds. We're going into the sewer. Let's go kill a snake and a bond measure. These public sewers are labyrinthian time. Since Tommy and Rollo never actually trained me, we could get lost down there. I'll become one of the mysterious sewer people. Over time, my memories of the English language will disappear, and I'll be forced to invent my own. Kubop kibble boobble skeeble! Get moving, Dale. Dear ex idols, someone needs to catch that snake, and I guess it's going to be me. P.S. I signed for your executive dartboard from the Sharper Image. It's on the wall. Holy crap, he's going in the sewer. That Boy Scout is going to crash our gravy train. we got to stop him. We're actually inside Arlen's colon. It's kind of spooky down here. Do you think poop has ghosts? Apparently, not everyone was afraid to use their toilets. Look, it's a wheel from a child's tricycle. This is a place of terrible beauty. Wait, did you hear something? Dale? Wait a second, that was Rollo's voice. They're after us! Well, how'd they even know we were down here? Probably the note I left. Come on, we've got to hurry up and catch that snake! <laughs> The snake! Quick, grab it! Yeah! I got a hold of it! It's trying to wrap itself around me, but it didn't count on my strategy of me wrapping around it! <laughs> I did it! I'm not sure that's Bobby's snake. Oh my god, it's not! Oh, Lord in heaven above. Don't worry, Hank. I've got three weeks of exterminating to catch up on. Where to begin? Eeny, meeny, miny, kill! Dale! Look at that vermin pit. More like money pit. Dale, stop killing our money right now. <sighs> What the hell happened to you? You used to be reptile and rodent killing machines. Now you're practically veterinarians. Hey, nobody give a damn about us till the snake showed up. And no one will give a damn about us once it's gone. That's why you kill? For appreciation? From people like him? You know why you should do it? Because it's your job and you're getting a paycheck. Or how about you do it because right now, Dale's wife, Channel 84's Nancy Hicks Gribble, is on her way to the animal control office. She's going to expose what really goes on in that snake control room. What do you want? I want you to end this madness and publicly repudiate Bond Measure S. There's Josh! Are you with me, brothers? Mm -hmm. 
Good. Hey, if, uh, if Bobby asks, we let Josh go on a farm. And since my raisin de tray, i.e., the Burmese python has been eradicated, I hereby resign my position. But what about future snake threats? Don't we need Bond Measure S to safeguard our children? I yes, the children. Bond Measure S is nothing more than an expensive government boondoggle that in no way will help us with our efforts in animal control. With 1% of the precincts in, we are projecting that Bond Measure A, the clean air for our children to breathe Bond Measure, will pass 62% to 38%. Oh, you hear that, little baby? You're going to be able to breathe. As did Bond Measure F, the children are our future initiative with 67% of the vote. Children really are our future, you know. And in a stunning upset, Bond Measure S for a snake-free Arlen squeaked by with only 59% of the vote. Tell me about the farm again, Dad. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's a really great place, I tell you what. Especially for a snake. You know, lots of, uh, lots of mice, I guess, that, uh, that Josh ate. That's Josh, all right. Tell me more. Uh, well, it's a, it's a good farm. Gentlemen, do not be alarmed if you hear any loud noises coming from my property over the next few days. I'm just blowing stuff up. Look what I found at the library. How to blow stuff up. You're making a bomb? Several. I'm engaged in an arms race with an exterminator in McMainerberry. You could get in a lot of trouble for this, Dale. I'm pretty sure the government keeps track of books like that. At least I hope they do. You mean Rusty Shackelford could get in a lot of trouble. I have a library card in his name. Shisha! <sighs> Are you still pretending to be that guy? It's a victimless crime, like eating grapes at the supermarket. Or stealing coupons from Hank's Sunday newspaper. Boomhauer. I want you to all look at the plate in front of you. What do you see? Steak. That's right, steak. That's what you eat when you're a member of Team Sizemore, the number one realtor in Heimlich County. But this month's top sellers get something more. They get to eat steak with me. Oh, the view must be great from up there. And this month's lucky diner is... Peggy Hill. Candy and Roger. Oh, yeah, yeah! Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you two. Bring your steaks on up here. Papa. It's easy to be the top salesperson when you sell Arlen Heights. Peggy is the real hero, trying to move those houses in Belcher's Grove. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll get here one day. One shack at a time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ouch. Why do we have to watch a foreign movie? If it was any good, they would have made an American version. Do you think I am enjoying this? No, but I need upscale clients in places like Arlen Heights. Wealthy people like culture. Cultured people watch foreign movies. Oh, something's happening. Uh, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Are you kidding, Dad? Colette is going to leave Etienne for Claude because Etienne has malaise. Malaise! That guy just sprouted wings. All right, that's it, Peggy. I'm going to have to ask you to relinquish the remote control. Fine. I'll watch the rest at men's. I bet she likes foreign movies. She's a foreigner. To her, it's just a movie. Dinner was splendid. I suppose it would be appropriate for us to reciprocate. We're having a party this weekend. We'd love it if you could make it. Oh, we'll be there. And then maybe this summer we come visit at your beach house on the golf. Uh, of course. Well, let's set a date. I get calendar. Please, do not make this awkward. I'll get it. Oh, it's the Wasana songs. 
of Arlen Heights. Well, how is life in the Heights? You know, I'm a realtor. Are you looking to sell? Because I just watched this wonderful French movie. Actually, Ted and I are thinking about selling our house. We're having a little party this weekend. You should come. We could talk more. <gasps> Make sure new guest house has big room so I can drop a present. Me! <laughs> Set the timer and retreat to a safe distance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my lucky hat! Uh. <sighs> my smokes! <laughs> Thanks for the ride, Hank. If I pass out before we get to the hospital, tell them my name is Rusty Shackelford. He's got great insurance. Medicaid. This is the dumbest thing you've ever done. You could have lost a finger. A cor correction. Rusty Shackelford could have lost a finger. <sighs> Hello, I'm Peggy Hill. I'm a guest of the Wasana Songs. You're on the list. Welcome to Arlen Heights. Peggy, come on in. Oh, I'm not trying to pressure you, but I thought I'd bring this sign in just in case. Peggy Hill, Sizemore Realty. Hello, Peggy Hill, Sizemore Realty. Take your seats, everybody. The presentation is about to begin. Presentation? That's right. All the products you see in this kitchen are made by the Cozy Kitchen Company. And I am your Cozy Kitchen sales lady. Hey, this is not a party. This is an ambush. You think if we buy fancy corkscrew, we'll get invited to Beach House? <laughs> I know what I'm buying. A giant spatula to flip this house. Dale Gribble? Maybe. Who's asking? Rusty Shackelford. D what? It's me, Dale. B but that's impossible. Rusty died in third grade. I didn't die. I moved. You need to stop using my name, Dale. I am not using your name, and I am not Dale. Come on, Dale. You're smoking the same brand of cigarettes you did in the third grade. Get off my property, whoever I am! Ta-da! Cozy Kitchen makes spaghetti so authentic, you'll say, Mamma mia! <laughs> ah. Now, let's mingle and place orders. One five-bedroom colonial with a side of multiple offers? <laughs> <laughs> Peggy, you're a delight. But I'm having second thoughts about moving. What? You can't. This is my way into Arlen Heights. Is it the commission? I'll cut it in half. Oh, it's not the commission. These people aren't just my customers. They've become my friends. Who will take care of them? I will. I will take over as Cozy Kitchen representative for you. I will sell your house. I'll even help you pack. I am a full-service realtor. Wow, Peggy, you sure are making this easy for me. But I need to talk to Ted first. It's done. We're free. Super. So, wait. How is selling kitchen appliances going to help you sell houses? Cozy Kitchen gets me in the door. Then Peggy the Realtor sells the house. Look at all these free samples. You see this can opener, Hank? This is also a door opener. Wow. A toaster that only cooks hot dogs. That's not a toaster, Bobby. What is it? A door opener! Exactly. And once I open enough doors, I will be the top seller eating steak at Chris's table. What are you doing here? You're a long way from Belcher's Grove. Peggy, I've been wondering, in Belcher's, do you count a couch on the roof as a family room? Mm. <laughs> oh, sometimes. But right now, 
I'm visiting clients. Ta-ta! Hi, I am Peggy Hill, member of Sizemore Realty and your new cozy kitchen representative. I'm leaving a free sample and my card. I, I really need to talk to Dale. I'm trying to get a small business loan, but the bank thinks I'm the same guy who skipped town on a string of failing alpaca farms. Well, if we see him, we'll give him the message. I want to handle this like gentlemen, but, well, I'm not leaving town until it's sorted out. Nice meeting you. Did you hear that? He's not leaving. <laughs> He's going to hunt me like an animal and kill me. Like an animal. I was never here. <laughs> Could someone toss me a beer? <sighs> Can I help you? Hey there, I'm Judy Barnes, Cozy Kitchen Corporate. I just wanted to stop by to welcome you in person. It's fun, isn't it? Well, I'm not getting the warmest reaction, and the free samples didn't help out as much as I expected. That wasn't a sample kit, silly. That was your first inventory shipment. Ah, uh, well, potato, potato. No potato. You owe us money. Lots of money. You probably don't realize how threatening you're coming off, even with the smile. Peggy, bless your heart. I don't think you understand how deep you're in. I suggest you read your contract. No right to arbitration. Serious financial ramifications. And it's not just the starter kit. I also have monthly quotas. They've got me over a barrel. This is just like that time I had to sell all those candy bars for school. Is there any way you can eat your way out of this? I'm afraid not, Bobby. I need to get those samples back. Excuse me, the gate isn't working. We had to change all the codes. Some sales lady was harassing people. I see. You know what that guard shack needs? A panini maker. Please exit the heights. What's all this? Next month's product. Your garage was locked. I hope you don't mind we used a crowbar. But I haven't sold this month's product yet. If I were you, I'd quit arguing and start selling. Because Cozy Kitchen is going to get their money one way or the other. Love your roses. Oh, hey, Shook. What's up? I came over to apologize. I have been so busy selling Cozy Kitchen to Arlen Heights, I've completely ignored my friends. Here, just circle what you want. Okay, um... Oh, I'll take one of these. A vegetable peeler? A $12 vegetable peeler? Well, I don't need anything else. Who cares? How about a juicer? A crepe pan? Help me out! I'm dying here! You're hurting me, Shug. What are you doing? I tried calling, but you didn't answer. Cozy Kitchen is not going so well, but it's okay. I have the perfect solution. Let's get this house on the market, huh? About the house, Peggy. It's just uh, a bad time of year for us, and... Uh... Oh, for goodness sake, Cindy, look at her. Just tell her. You're not planning to sell the house, are you? No, I'm sorry. I had to get out of my contract, and the only way was to find a replacement. We did what we had to do. We tried to disappear from the face of the earth by holding up at our beach house. 
It's on that island. They still found us. They have motorboats, Peggy. Motorboats? You have no idea what Cozy Kitchen is capable of. If you want out, you have to find a better way to disappear than we did. Or find your own Patsy. I'm gonna be a Cozy Kitchen representative. Oh, thank you, Aunt Peggy. I'm gonna wear pink and learn to cook and, and... Oh, God! Oh, God! I can't believe I have this great job! You hear that, baby? We're gonna be okay. Stop! I cannot let you do this. But you promised. I I'm sorry, Luann. It's a scam. I want to sell Cozy Kitchen! Come on! One more leprechaun! Damn it! What are you doing? Hiding, and you're blowing my cover. This is my hedge. Go find your own. I was here first, and Hank deeded this hedge to me. He didn't want you to get it in the divorce. Shh. Are you stifle woman? I think I hear Shackelford's car. Who's Shackelford? The man whose identity I stole. Who are you hiding from? Cozy Kitchen. The people who made our vegetable peeler? That thing's great! All I wanted was to sell a big house, get to sit at Chris's little table, and get some respect. All I wanted was a fall guy so I'd never have to take responsibility for my actions. They're destroying my realty career. They're threatening to take everything, and I can't tell Hank about it. I don't know where to turn. Me neither. There's no escape. Maybe if I killed myself, he'd leave me alone. While you're at it, take me out too. Peggy, it would be my pleasure. A murder-suicide pact. That might work. If Shackelford and Cozy Kitchen think we're dead... They'll stop looking for us. Let's do it. I'll pretend to kill you, and then pretend to take my own life. Pretend? Ah, well, I guess I'm still in. Okay, here's the story. We stole Bill's car. That part's true. Then we drove it into the ravine. And you think that's really going to convince people we're dead? How hard can it be? Shackelford convinced me he was dead in the third grade. Here's Bill needs to have his tires alive. Run! Hmm. Well, Bill's gonna need a new seat. After we throw the dummies into the water, we leave a suicide note on the railing. The swift current will tear the dummies apart, and the cops won't find a thing. Well, then why throw the dummies in the first place? Who would even know? We'd know. Show a little pride, Peggy. Oh, Hank! You're home early. Huh? No, I'm not. What's going on with those dummies? Maybe this is good. We could use a witness to our fake deaths. To your what? Did I not mention this to you? What the hell were you thinking? I was out of options, Hank. I couldn't sell a house to cover the cost of the pots and pans. If you have any better ideas than murder-suicide, I would love to hear them. Well, why don't you throw one of those parties like Cindy did? Yes, that's good. Then I could find a patsy that I'm not related to. No, then you could at least prove to this Judy woman that you're trying your best. And then Judy could tell corporate what she sees at the party. This could work, Hank. Judy, I'm so glad you could make it. I presume you have a check for me. We'll talk after my presentation. Coming. 
<laughs> You'll never catch me, Shackleford! And thanks to my Cozy Kitchen non-stick frying pan, $49.99, my eggs slide onto the plate. Help! You gotta hide me! Shackleford is on his way! Dale, if you are not here to make a purchase, I must ask you to leave. Ah, uh, then I am taking you as my hostage! Ha! No! Oh, Lord. Ah! Uh, oh! Uh, stop it! Let uh, go! No! Dale! <sighs> Oh, that does it, Dale! I will kill you! If you kill me, I'm taking you with me! Oh, no, you won't! Oh, stop! What the heck is going on? We still have a chance. Act like a ghost. <laughs> wow, this pan's amazing. I'm riddled with tiny shrapnel, but it doesn't have a scratch on it. Ooh. I could make one hell of a flapjack with that, honey. Yep, Cozy Kitchen makes a quality product. I tell you what. If it can survive an explosion, Imagine how it will stand up to the demands of the modern kitchen. I'll take one. Yeah, let me have one of those bad boys. Yeah, me too. Do they come in other sizes? Yeah. If I sell my entire inventory today, yeah. will you please let me out of my contract? No. I'm never getting out, am I? There might be one way. If corporate thinks I died in the explosion, too, consider it done. We need to settle this whole identity theft issue once and for all. Oh, God! A gun! Die like a man, Gribble. Die like a man. Just sign these forms so I can get on with my life. Okay. You know, Judy, you're going to need to disappear for a while. I know the perfect hideaway. A sunny two-bedroom in Arlen Heights. Really? Mm-hmm. Call me. We'll set up a tour. The view really is beautiful from up here.